Hello everybody, welcome. I'm No02, thank you for watching this video. Thus begins our Act 5 playthrough guide. We're on No Hope mode. We're solo, we're with the bots. This is the deck that I'm using. Link in the description to this deck. Where I talk about it, how it works, why, we're, why we choose the cards that we do. Things like that. We're on the very first mission, mission here. Gotta repair that boat. Ravenous. This card is a yes. Uh, we like to see this card. We like to see this card in solo mode. There's so much food here, and we're the only person who can eat it, and the bots aren't affected by this. So we never we end up just recovering all of our trauma. We have lots of food to eat. We actually have food scavenger in this deck, so extra healing, extra stuff. This mission is pretty much free for the most part, so long as we don't take so long. We ran out of food? Anyways. There's also a great card to see if you in the middle of, of your campaign when you have trauma and things like that. Getting this in the middle of your campaign is really nice because for the most part that means that you get to recover a crap ton of trauma. So, a little bit of housekeeping before we begin. One, I will not be using any burn cards. Not that you can't. Feel free to use as many burn cards as you like. Sometimes they're fun to use. But I don't want you guys to feel like you have to use burn cards in order to beat No Hope Mode solo. So I won't be using any of them. Secondly, I will not be taking any hives out if taking the hive out would result in a quicker, faster, easier mission. But for the most part, none of them. I want, again, because I don't want to, I want to demonstrate that you can, in fact, beat all of these missions as they were designed without any sort of quick exit. So we're not going to be skipping any bit of content or anything like that as far as taking a hive out. Feel free to take as many hives as you like during your run. In fact, on most missions, taking a hive out is typically easier a lot of the times. So, this grab our shotgun. I like the shotgun. Ooh, ho, 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 ho. The most important upgrade is this offensive upgrade. We'll grab our grenades. I don't know. For the most part, in solo mode, I don't really care about grabbing, grabbing the duffel bag. We don't have pinata. We actually don't have any sort of way of generating a toolkit, so I'm just gonna buy it now. We won't. We won't necessarily use it now. It's not always beneficial to use it because sometimes there's just there's actually not enough copper in the rooms sometimes that uh, we can pay for itself, sort of thing. So we'll only use it if the bots are in trouble. But getting a grenade upgrade, that's real nice. Real, real nice. Pretty much free. Get down there. Thankfully, we don't have a horde event. Typically, if we were to have a horde event, I would be trying to get to the boat repair before that horde event. And that would be like the dream case scenario where we can get there and stack the horde events together. Right, this opening area and the bridge are probably the hardest parts of the map for the most part. For whatever reason, it seems like... It's so easy to sort of get bogged down, stuck in this area. Try to shoot all those zombies from a distance and pull them towards us. And the reason why I, I try to push so hard to get to the before a horde event, because taking a horde in these areas is a real pain in the butt. One of the eat that car. When you blow up cars, the contents inside are destroyed. Lucky cop. Oh, heck yeah. Let's we'll take that. Another thing, too, for, for the toolkit is sometimes if you're looking for a better gun, that can be the case as well. And because the weapon rarity seems to be pretty inflated in Act 5. We've got a hive up there. We will not be taken. What, what triggered this horde event? Who's done this to me? Did I shoot birds by accident? I doubt it. I can't, I would never do such a thing. Can you believe it? They're fighting alongside the ridge. Could be their partial. Oh man. Burn. No. They seemed in control. I must have shot birds, right? Anyways, losing out on our uh 
secondary objective kind of sucks, but you can sort of see why I just don't like this be this bridge area. Just sort of a pain in the butt to get through in general. Let's just force it. I'm trying to get through as quickly as possible. Just, just move and groove here. I don't think I shot birds. Is that a fixed horde event? I don't recall getting a fixed horde event there. Maybe I'm silly. Just run through here. Looks like you've seen better days. But I don't think we can ever truly die here. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to, uh, that I need to mention here: we are running T5, right? We love it. It's dandy. It's great. Yep. We'll take all this. We're happy to take all this. Bruiser. The bots will not. That's what I'm trying to say is the bots will not drop ammo for you unless you're running that weapon. I need you guys not to run towards the bruiser. I appreciate it. Look at our bots is getting absolutely wrecked. Oh, good throw, Hoffman. Good throw. Let's get this show on the road. It feels like it's just not stopping. We'll jump over when the boat lowers. Yeah, so what I was trying to say is that the bots will not drop ammo for you unless you're carrying a weapon that uses that ammo. Because of that reason then, we actually like I actually try to carry the Magnum as my secondary. Once again, our plants go up in flames. So the bots will drop me ammo <laughs> for our expired T5. Because I find if we do end up running a primary that uses AR. I do feel like I run out of run into ammo problems anyways. Oh, that's a tall boy. Oh my goodness. Look, that's a fast that's a fast bruiser. Keeping this. Rejoice as we need to get out of here. And the pathing now at this point is gonna be very specific how we're gonna go up the center. Very specifically here. And restock on our ammo. Grab our extra grenade, take our revolver. Check for some loot. The only bad thing about carrying the with the revolver is that typically I like to hold putting this in my pocket. Like uh, all all the attachments that I'm going to want on my secondary. One of them being extended magazine, and we can't do that on a revolver, so that kind of sucks. So I typically preferred the Desert Eagle as my secondary because you can hold all of the attachments that you possibly can imagine in the whole world. Purple laser sight's quite nice too. No toolkit room. And we'll set up right. So the pathing here to, to the center is very specific in that we can't, well, we can't use healing accessories, so. And that we're trying to get a little bit of looting done and then check for the hives. Which, ironically enough, right, I'm not going to be taking any of the hives, but setting yourself up to take the fastest hive out of this mission is a huge benefit as far as getting out quickly. And you can still get some loot while doing it. Room. I think we encountered an extra grenade at some point, right? Can't recall. Maybe we'll leave some food in here because we'll we'll sort of be coming back this way in the near future here. But now that we're in the center, for the most part, we're set up to go any way that we want. The world is our oyster and whatnot, right? But from here, you can see if there's a hive or not over there. We got the docks over there. We do have a horde event now. Power food, but I do like to go restaurant first. And typically, getting boat storage, I would consider as bad RNG. 
I like to enter the restaurant from this side. You can see all the sleepers back here. You know, like that one. <laughs> and also, too, if there was a hive here, we, we would be able to, we would be able to see it immediately, check it, take it out. Oh, sorry, I can take that. Now we're chilling. The reason why I like going restaurant first is just that it's easier, it's safer. Another place where we can loot potentially very comfortably and still hold off against sword events very easily. And if our very first card, our very first pickup of the of the objective here, ends up being the uh, boss card, we would like to fight the boss here. Pop it out of here. Let's pick this up. Do some looting. Not really gonna come back here. Getting a little too close for comfort here. Didn't see that coming, did you? You can see how fast we were loading, like Like the make it's gonna make Right, like the, how fast we reloaded all the extra damage. Pick this up. Let's go back to the freezer. Nice, safe, secure. The freezer. Things will spawn in here. Sorry, Osman. I guess we'll try and take this up. You can sort of, kind of, toss these. These objectives, right? Like, kind of? We'll try and toss, I've never actually done this before, but we'll try and toss this off the top. We'll take the fast exit out of the boat storage area. That wasn't. Good. That was so far away. Don't believe it. Let's pop it. Let's just pop the T5, and we'll get in here. Clear it out, man. The T5 just makes forcing the issue so so easy. Eat all the food again. Our shotgun is unbelievably powerful. Ammo? Someone drop ammo? Pretty much like having an accuracy deck. This. Now we're just running around checking for the next objective, right? Trying to keep the bots moving. I know there's stuff chasing us here, but... Get back inside the bunker. Push the button. And now that we have a, re a revolver as our secondary, like, for the most part, you can just freely pop the T5 as ever, whenever you see fit. There's pretty much no repercussion of it. If you don't have the revolver, you can very easily get through some of these missions without, without ever needing an ammo pickup. If you just time it wisely. So hopefully we can toss that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. We'll get the this, we'll get the extra objective, we'll get some more food. Uh, Molotovs? Because we have pyro. Throwing birds is like a huge healing boon. Let's just go. Let's just leave. We'll leave that right there. You can climb on top of this truck, so. Not lost. We don't have to go all the way back around. Sort of stockpile everything at the center again. We'll put it right there. And because we opened this up and taking the center, we cleared the center. Nothing's respawned in here. 
Splinter is sort of like our base of operations now. Good throw, Hoffman. Good throw. We'll go back and get the ammo. It is important to note that after you've dropped the objective, it no longer shows up on your HUD. So if you forget where you drop something, it can be a real pain in the butt to find it again. And this sort of works out perfectly. We can get back to the center, back to our little holdout area here. Oh, that's not fair. Right. Back into our little hidey hole. Do some eating. Got our food stockpiled here. Plenty of cover. The bots dropped us some AR ammo, it looks like. And uh, we're Gucci, as everyone says. Lay down and feed her children. Lay down and feed her children. Right there. Good example. Bots drop his ammo for AR. And let's go and get our last... Our last trinket here. What's that guy doing over there? He must be stuck. He looks very stuck. This will leave him there for now. Extra grenade. Nice. Bomb squad. Bomb squad. Offensive scavenger. Good cards. So as soon as it's at the docks, we're going to check here. We probably should have opened up that one first because this is a good holdout spot or decent enough. I don't know exactly where all of the... Oh, God. Where all the possible spawns are in the dock area. We'll grab the copper since we're here, right? We sort of want to get out of here, though. Wait, not over here. So we made a mistake. We should have we should have blown the other door first. That would have been smarter. But this is good enough. This is good enough. We can even hold out here. I always like stand at the door, but you can just hold out here. If we need to fall back, we can always fall back now to our door. Not bad. Take these, but do me a Open that up. We're going. And so I'm assuming now that this is going to spawn our boss. This is our boss spawn. Need to reload. There it is. We got everything. Let's get to the boat. Assuming now we should be hearing the roar of some sort of angry There we go, the hag. Not too bad. I don't know if the hag is running to our our last known location as a result of this objective or not. So we're just gonna leave. Uh, we just leave. That's about it. That's what you have. That's how you deal with the hag on this map for the most part. In fact, uh, I happened to be playing with Swing Point way back in the day. He sort of randomly ended up in his lobby and he chatted with me and he, he's very nice. He plugged. He he let me plug my YouTube channel. Incredibly kind of him. Okay, looks like the boss aggroed him. He thought I was playing with him, and a hag showed up, and so they were all set up to deal with the hag and things like that, and they had a flashbang ready, and everyone was prepared to deal with the hag in the most efficient way possible. And up until this point, um, I had just ignored the hag. I just ran past her. So, as far as my experience with fighting hags goes, I had none. Literally none, because I just didn't ever shoot them or deal with them or fight them or, or interact with them. <laughs> and so when it came time to deal with this hag, and everyone was like, oh man, the hag's not moving. The hag was like on the other side of the map. We need to like pull her over here. I just jumped up and shot the hag. And they were like, the swing point and all his bras were like, uh, you do that on purpose? <laughs> of course, me shooting the hag resulted in a horde event. 
I didn't know the hag called a horde if you shot her. <laughs> I just everyone is so worried about the hag. I just walked past her. She's like bugged out right now. So we're just gonna keep ignoring her. And to this day. I was quite embarrassed. I was quite embarrassed. I didn't know. What was this card? Bodyguard, we don't care about that. The bots are here to protect us. Yeah, I just didn't know. So this looks scary, but it's not. The hag is... I don't know what the hag is doing. I think it's like... Oh, one of the bots just shot her. Oh, not sure why the bot shot her. She was stuck in some weird loop where she was aggroed by one of the bots, but didn't want to. I'm just gonna die. Do we want to heal the bots? I'm gonna keep Jim alive. Do we want to heal the bots and give them an extra life? I don't think so. I think. I think we can worry about that on the next mission here. We're super close to the end. Let's just get to the end. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I shot the hag anyways. That's the story. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope everyone's doing well. I don't think it's always the third objective that calls the, the horde in, the, the boss in, but it might be. But I think I've had some instances where the very first thing I picked up called in the, the boss event. Oh yeah. We we'll, we'll throw a grenade and try to keep Jim alive. Keep in mind that when you're dodging hawker shots like this, these are open windows. So if you dodge a hawker shot and your movement leads you into an open window, sometimes the hawker shot will track you through the window. <laughs> but there you go. That's the first mission. No hives needed. No burn cards needed. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see you in the future.